Welcome, Mr. Schnabel. You are a product, product manager, RFID systems at Torque, and I'm very happy to have you here on the webcast. Where are you, are you located today? Yeah, good morning. Thank you very much for having me today. I'm sitting in uh, Mülheim an der Ruhr right now in our headquarter here. Okay, great. And I, I think the sun is shining in your office, right? As oh, here we, too. Yes, okay. it's very warm today. Yes. <laughs> great. Yeah. So we are broadcasting from Lüneburg, a little city nearby Hamburg. And let's start already with the first question. Please answer the first question briefly. Automation. Automation is very important in industry. What percentage of manufacturing companies are already set up with automation technologies? Yeah, that's a very good question. I mean, it's always difficult to really um, tell you some number of percentage, but we have the feeling that every industry that is currently producing any goods and have yeah big plants or um, some some factories uh, yeah this industry has a very high percentage of, of automation i'd say because all the machines and all the the engineering is quite automated and um, i think everything in between and before and after is I think not as automated as we want it to be because the processes between the production facilities or the logistics or the intra logistics, this is something where we see that it's constantly rising, but it's definitely not as high as the production or the producing industry uh, so far. Okay. What do you think? Which industries are leading in automation? Um, yeah. Very good, um, very good question. So I'd see this question the other way around because for me, there is one important topic. So if you have an industry which is really caring about getting more and more uh, automated, then um, we often forget the industries where you don't have the people or the knowledge so far at all. So we, we did a survey in the hospital logistics, for instance, and all the laboratories around the hospital um, logistics. And you can see that there is a huge amount of manual work for the logistic processes and the, the um, transfer of consumable goods and the location of this. So um, just to give an idea that I think 15% of all the material in a hospital is getting lost every, every single year, which is quite a huge amount of um, material and of course a, a very um, big value that's getting lost. And on the other hand, if you look at the laboratories, there is a huge of material needed for, for all the research and, and development. And I think the stuff there needs 10 to 20% of the time only to organizing and finding stuff in the laboratory. And this is a very good example that this is an industry which has no kind of sensitivity at all to start with kind of automation. And um, yeah, that's why I think, of course, all the producing industry is quite ahead of everything else. But I think our mission or our vision should be to focus on the industry which are way behind. And yeah, these industries don't have even persons who are really are responsible for, for improving the processes at all. Ah, okay. So there's still a lot to do. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Keyword now, configuration and device management. Why is this so important for industry, especially in the context of wireless IoT technologies? I think it's very important because if you want to gain more information and um, get a higher visibility of the process, then of course you need some kind of read points and devices. So the more devices you get, the more complex is the infrastructure, the yeah, configuration and the complete device management. And that's um, why I think it's, it's a big challenge to get all these devices 
um, in a management tool so that you can wirelessly configure them. Because let's stay at this hospital logistic. It's it's not an industrial environment. Yeah, it's it's an it's an infrastructure where you have single read points, but there is no typical PLC or no <laughs> typical computer where where the readers are connected to. And if you have these single spots all over a place, then it's really really difficult to manage them at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, now let's come to another point, your company. Let's talk about the automation solution, solutions from Turk. What automation solutions does Turk offer? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, a question and I always compare these questions to kind of, yeah, uh, go to a bakery and ask what kind of bread do they have. So we have a, have a huge range of, um, of automation because, yeah, as our slogan says, your global automation partner, we have a, a, a big variety of, of solutions and, and products. And um, I think we still have um, a huge portfolio for the classical automation. So if you look at the the producing industry, you have um, a lot of PLCs, you have a field um, a field level where you have a lot of sensors, you have an IO level for collecting all those data and then transferring them via a field bus to the PLC. So this is a very yeah classical uh, automation part. But uh, yeah, the other thing is, I think we are very good at the um, automated identification so all the stuff about uh, RFID, barcode, the, the camera uh, cameras that we have in our portfolio, this is a very uh, kind of new uh, portfolio that we have, but I think a very, very important one. And it, um, yeah, it, it's a great value added on top of our typical uh, automation portfolio that we had in the past. Yeah, thank you. Yes, the next... Um question is, I think, a very important question for your company because uh, it goes about a new product, yeah, IT product. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to learn more about the Turk Automation Suite. Can you mm-hmm. explain this industrial IoT tool, which you call TAS? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the TAS, or in short, TAS, or Turk Automation Suite, is our big software um, puzzle where we want to have a look at a big picture of how the future, let's say, information flow can look like. So the, the Turk Automation Suite is meant to be a tool where you can collect all the data in the field and directly share and send them into the upper levels database systems Yeah, and the, the, this whole IoT world. And today we have a two way or two-step strategy because today it's still a tool which is mainly made for the device management and the network configuration which i talked in the last question about and then the future idea or future vision is that you really can use not only the um, device data uh, itself but all the process data or the rfid data to directly share them with other software um, solutions and the IoT world directly. So today we are in a yeah kind of smaller step, but we want to extend it to a really, really huge software tool that we can use for IoT. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great, thank you. What information do your customers receive when they gain insights into different process levels when, when using TAS? Mm-hmm. Yeah, here we can start at the very basic level, I think. So if you have all the devices and at that point, it doesn't matter what kind of device from the Turk universe it is. It can be an HMI, it can be a, a field bus um, block. So some IO module, it can be a PLC, it can be a sensor. So basically right now you can collect all the device data itself. So what kind of firmware revision is on it? What's the status about this product? Um, in what kind of yeah, status it is right now, does it report some error, is it working properly? So you get very, let's say, device-based information as well. And um, the other thing which is now becoming more and more uh, important in this tool is that you can instantly get the process data from the devices. So for example, we have a new radar 
uh, sensor and um, with the test software suite you can yeah remotely get all the access to this radar sensor so you can see literally what the radar sensor sees so there is um, a second let's say bypass um, to get the information out from the radar sensor or the other example is that if you look into our RFID world you can have access to the RFID data as well so it would be another way to let's say get the data out of the readers or the modules mm. okay thank you yes I think probably another uh, benefit for your customers uh, this is the next question. How does TAS support your customers in reading data carriers in an energy efficient way? Mm -hmm. So with this question, we are kind of focusing very, very yeah, hardly on the RFID uh, portfolio that we, that we currently have. And TAS in the first step is there to help you to find the best and properly working configuration of your RFID system. So um, there is always a discussion that RFID is not always a plug and play solution. So there's a lot of configuration and a lot of, um, yeah, a um, lot of testing uh, ongoing. And TAS helps you with some integrated tools for RFID to really find the, the most efficient, uh, the most efficient um, way to configure the reader, both in the, let's say, ecological way, but also the economical way. So to really find a solution fast and then try to use the reader with as less as power as possible. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, now let's come to the wireless IoT tomorrow. Your company is already a very loyal partner and sponsor of this event. This year, the RFID Wireless IoT Tomorrow 2023 is located in Wiesbaden in October, mm -hmm. and you will exhibit there as well. Can you give us a preview of the exhibits and products at your booth uh, this year? Yeah, for sure. So first of all, we are very proud that uh, we are uh, a partner uh, for such a long time. And I'm very looking forward to every year as soon as the wireless LT takes place. So I'm very looking forward to uh, see you in the next month in Wiesbaden. So like um, we are doing it uh, in the last years, I think we have two kind of um, yeah strategies at the wireless IT. The first one is, of course, talking a lot of products and solutions. So of course, we are there presenting our current uh, reader portfolio and our current um, solutions that we have. So to be more precise, we are um, showing our HF and UHF readers. And of course, you can find our RFID gate solution uh, at the booth and our yeah second, let's say, um, yeah business unit. So we have a lot of experts available on the wireless IoT because of course together with Tugvilan system we are very um, looking forward to customers who are interested in turnkey solutions so um, if there are customers who don't want to the integration by themselves they can contact us and we can do everything for them so on the one side we have the products and on the other hand we have the consulting for RFID. Mm -hmm. Yeah thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you involve TAS for setting up the booth? So TAS helped us in the first step to um, really set up the application and set up uh, the readers. So um, if you have an exhibition with a lot of RFID uh, stuff, then you have lots of booths uh, involving RFID readers. And I think from the interface point of view, it's a totally mess ongoing inside there. And TAS is helping us to find the sweet spot of our reader configuration that the applications are working in the in, in the real life uh, uh, environment. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, Turk and Turk VLAN Systems, uh, these companies are the first time also exhibitors uh, at the special area, a special area as a part of the exhibition who is telling the story of RTLS and also um, we have to repeat, I lost my... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hear you again. Okay, perfect. Oh my gosh, wait a second. Probably wrong. Okay, now we go 
Uh, we start again this last yep. question. Um, this year, Torque and Torque VLAN systems are the first time also exhibitor in the special area RTLS and automation. So the team is organizing this special area to show uh, use cases there and to give the exhibitors the chance to, to explain technologies. Um, what are you showing there in this special area, in this special automation area? We are happy that we can present there our RFID forklift solution. So we want to really show the rising, uh, yeah, the rising interest in on-demand identification. I would say, um, because the the information that our customer require should be more precise, more often with a higher visibility, and that's a perfect application for forklifts with integrated RFID solution. Because if you remember one of the first questions that you that you asked me, and uh, I told about all these steps between some production processes itself. So the material tracking, the inventory and warehouse management, the picking and shipping, everything can be really, really easily solved by RFID forklift solution. And that's why I think it's a very good uh, thing to present our working RFID forklift solution in this RTLS and automation area. Great. Yeah, great to have you there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, now we are coming already to the last question of this webcast. Um, and it's about future. Mm -hmm. I would like to know, where do you think we will be in 10 years in terms of the process of digitalization? Yeah. So I hope and think that we are thinking in bigger pictures than we do it today. And yeah, what do I mean with that? So I think the, the big challenge today is that every company or maybe every industry is focusing very much on their own process. So they think about their closed loop and their own RFID based solution. But if we really want to gain this visibility or transparency over the complete supply chain, then we need to zoom out a little bit and look really uh, on the big picture at all. And I hope and I think we will see more, let's say, um, more interoperability or more discussions between single industries and different companies because it makes sense if you put some kind of tax to any kind of product then it makes sense that from the beginning to the end everyone can use this kind of tech and information and that we have standardized uh, apis for sharing this kind of information and i hope and think that in 10 years there will be a lot of yeah, discussions and uh, standards ongoing between industry and companies that we can ensure a more digitalized process over the complete supply chain. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I hear a lot of very positive uh, aspects from, from your side. That's great. Okay. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much for your time, for having you here in this webcast and uh, see you pretty soon in Wiesbaden. Yeah, bye, thanks Mr. very much. Bye-bye, have a great day. Take care.